the set. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, friends, family, and especially our guests of honor, the class of 2020. It is my great pleasure to welcome each of you to this memorable occasion. Although a little unconventional, in fact, I just took my, my mask off so that I could, I could talk at the podium here, but we'll put it back on in a moment. Um, the, obviously, our, our normal graduation is part of a larger ceremony with the university, but we wanna really make sure to congratulate all of you for your accomplishment and your success making it here today. This is a big deal and incredibly important. It's been an incredible journey for each of you, full of challenges, but you know, especially recently, but far more successes, and we wanna really focus on that. Over the last couple of months, your perseverance and your patience has really defined you, and I've been incredibly impressed with all of you. None of us could have predicted exactly how this global pandemic would impact our lives and continues to impact our lives. Those of us here on the stage vividly recall our own graduations in different ways and nothing we experience can compare to this current situation. So today, we are celebrating you in a little different way, but we hope that each of you understand the impact of your monumental successes and the impact you will continue to have in your future in all different ways. Today marks the beginning of a new journey. During your training, you've likely heard frequently about references to the words perseverance, professionalism, and purpose. The purpose to make new discoveries. The purpose to translate your research to effective clinical applications to improve the health and well-being of all the people we serve, and the purpose to change lives. Today, you have reached the culmination of one phase of this journey, and you are one step closer to achieving that ultimate purpose. I am so proud of each of you and the professionals you have become, and I thank you for allowing me and the University of Kentucky College of Medicine to be part of your journey. I'm gonna turn the podium over shortly, but before I do, I wanna give you one final tip to take with you, TIP. You all know very well that medicine is an evidence-based field and will always be important to reflect back on the evidence or truth behind any research project or discovery. So that's the T in tip, so truth. As you make decisions based on the evidence or the truth, you want to always take a high moral ground making decisions with the right motives or integrity, the I in tip. And finally, you always need to remind yourselves the purpose of which you came to be a researcher and instructor to discover cures and solutions to improve the well being of our community. Please always refer, or purpose, please always refer or reflect on tip the truth great integrity in how you apply that truth and the purpose you all came to do here to do a great good and impact for our community uh, and our country. Without further ado, I'd like to invite Dr. Beth Garvey, our Associate Dean for Biomedical Education to the stage. Dr. Garvey will deliver today's keynote message. Good morning, everybody. Every generation has milestones or events that are burned into their consciousnesses. Some of these things are reminders of my life's journey. Um, I remember uh, the funeral of John F. Kennedy. I can remember uh, seeing his coffin uh, drawn by horses through Washington and his young son saluting those co that coffin. I remember the Beatles singing on the Ed Sullivan Show for the first time uh, in their first trip to America. I remember the horrible summer and spring of 1968 when Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy were assassinated. I remember watching with rapt attention when um, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong landed on the moon in 1968. 
uh, the bicentennial year, 1976, was the year I graduated from uh, high school, and so that was the first graduation that I, that I attended. Uh, graduations from college, and when I got a master's degree, and in 1991, when I, when I got my own, my own PhD. Uh, there were uh, the Los Angeles riots of, of 1992, after the uh, four police officers beat Rodney King. Um, seems like some things don't change. Uh, September 11th, 2001, maybe something uh, you remember. Uh, watching the second tower came down while I was standing in the MS corridor on the sixth floor of Med Science, looking at a little black and white TV I'd brought into the lab to watch UK basketball games on. I was a young assistant professor, and uh, the faculty and staff of every lab um, on the hall was there with me as we were watching that. And now the spring of, of 2020, uh, when we have experienced a worldwide pandemic for the first time in 100 years. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, another uh, era of, of social and racial unrest. Um, most of these memories are my memories, and some of them will be yours because you uh, have lived through some of these. Uh, every one's lives are marked by events and memories that define who we are. Uh, maybe it's the death of a loved one, a divorce of your parents, uh, the birth of your first child, or events in your community, or the nation or the world. Uh, maybe it's a book you read or something you uh, watched, a uh, podcast, um, something like that. Today, though, we mark an important milestone in your lives. Today, we celebrate your graduation from graduate school. This is an important point in your journey, and it represents achievement, your ability to work towards a goal, uh, and maybe marks the beginning of a new journey uh, in your life. Some of you will be off to professional school. Uh, some of you will be going to new jobs that, that um, these degrees have opened up for you. Uh, some of you will be doing more training. Some of you will be going to postdoctoral fellowships. Um, some of you will, going on, will be going on to get a PhD. Uh, some of you will be doing residencies. Uh, the degree you earn this spring is a stepping stone to a new chapter in your lives. Uh, to be sure, to get to this point, you've endured hardship. Uh, maybe your hardship was financial. Maybe you worked a full-time job while going to school. Um, maybe it was learning for the first time in your lives how to study. That didn't happen for me until graduate school. Maybe it was separation for the first time from loved ones or, or a spouse. Uh, maybe it was just the day-to-day -day stress of, of juggling classes and papers and exams uh, and trying to have a life at the same time. On top of all the difficulties you faced as you went through uh, graduate school, you also had to deal with a worldwide pandemic. Um, but you all made it. Uh, you wrote your theses and dissertations while under lockdown. Uh, many of you took your final oral, oral exams via Zoom uh, or online. Uh, you passed your final course exams. You finished your classes online. Um, all of you have exhibited resilience that has allowed you to succeed. And you'll need these skills. Um, you've been forced to learn them through these trying times, uh, but they will serve you well as you move on. None of you has chosen an easy path. Your successes have set you up for more responsibilities. Um, those of you going to medical school or dental school, you have four more years of classwork. Lucky you. Um, You'll have tr clinical training and, and perhaps uh, many more years of postdoctoral training, uh, depending on the field you, you end up in. Those of you who finished your PhD, you are likely going through additional training to get the job that you ultimately want. Some of you have positioned yourselves for better jobs with better pay, but more responsibilities. Whatever your path, whatever you have chosen, you will face challenges. And because of that, I want to give you some advice that has helped me on my travels from, from graduate school to professor and 
hopefully darn near retirement. Um, so I'm going to go through a few points that I think will help you on your journeys. The first one I learned from my father when I was a senior in college, and uh, it has served me well, and that is to treat people who work under you and with you with respect and kindness. People work harder and better for those who appreciate them. And because of your advanced degrees, you are likely going to have people that work for you uh, during your uh, work lives. You need to be able to appreciate them and trust them. One of the hardest things I had to do as a young assistant professor was to uh, turn over my, my hard-earned and my hard-developed projects to people who didn't know a lot about what they were doing yet. Um, I had to trust that they would learn. I had to trust that if they adapted techniques that weren't quite exactly the way I showed them, that it would be okay. Uh, that's a hard lesson to, to learn. Um, you need to treat people well. You need to trust them. Uh, they will, will be super important for uh, your long-term um, job success. Kind of along those lines, you need to hire good people. This advice came from my graduate mentor who um, gave it to me while I was starting my, uh, my first independent research position. Um, people will make you or break you uh, because science is a team sport. Uh, ultimately, um, if, you, if you go into an academic position or you go into a research position, um, you'll have people who will be doing the work for you because as you advance through your careers, that's what happens. Um, you need to have good people. So I'll refer you back to my first point, uh, that you need to trust them and appreciate them. Uh, I actually made a mistake hiring my first technician and had to let her go. So that was a, that was a tough lesson for me. Um, but if you make a mistake, you just need to admit it and move on. Um, third point I want to make is you have to find work-life balance. Uh, I learned this from experience as well. So you just saw my boss, and um, so I'm going to tell you something in confidence. On Friday afternoons, I play golf. Um, and, and I do that because I found that hitting things is actually therapeutic for me. And so I go hit golf balls around the, uh, around the golf course. Um, you need to find something that works for you. Uh, you need to read novels or garden or, or listen to music or play music. You need to hang with your friends. You need to spend time with your loved ones. Take your vacation time. Recharge. Uh, go to your kids' games and recitals. Don't miss out on life. Work is work, but you have a life in addition to that, and you need to be able to um, learn how to deal with the stresses that your work will, will give you. Um, there'll be grant deadlines. Uh, those of you going into clinical work, there'll be patients that are difficult. Um, there's a lot of things that will stress you. Uh, find balance. It's, it's really important uh, for your mental health. You need to find a mentor. You are never too old or too advanced in your career that you don't need advice. Look for role models for the next step in your career. And it doesn't matter how far advanced you are. Um, by the way, those people might be younger than you and maybe even less experienced. Uh, I can't tell you how much I have learned from junior faculty who have a different life view than I do. Uh, it's it's um, really important to have an open mind uh, and learn from people that, that you might not expect to learn from. Next point is to be a lifelong learner. You can always learn something new. Science changes really rapidly, and um, you need to have an open mind to be able to kind of grasp the new technologies and the new ideas that, that people come out with. Uh, it's actually pretty hard. And if you are not always trying to learn something new, you're going to get behind. Um, I have often told my graduate students that they are ready to graduate uh, when they realize they don't know everything. 
You know, during graduate school, we start out not knowing anything, but as we progress, we realize, well, yeah, I'm becoming expert at something, and I know a lot. And actually, when you go to defend your thesis, um, you probably know more about that project than anybody else in the room with you. Uh, but don't get cocky, because there's plenty you don't know, and you need to have an open mind uh, for those things. So. My next point is to have an open mind. Um, new ideas come to those whose, whose uh, minds are open and, and fertile. Um, this is a, a quote from Charles Kettering. He was the head of research at General Motors from 1920 to 1947. He holds 160 some odd patents in things I don't understand. Uh, but he said, there exists limitless opportunities in every industry. Where there is an open mind, there will always be a frontier. You are going out on the, on the frontier of science. You are going out on the leading edge. And you will only be successful if your minds are open. And then finally, learn to be a good communicator. You will need it for your profession. Science that isn't communicated doesn't do anybody any good. Uh, wherever you end up, um, whether it is at the bench or whether it is some other field, uh, maybe, maybe as a clinician, maybe as a, uh, a science writer, whatever your chosen field is, um, you will need to be able to communicate. Uh, we're not great at that as a, as a field. Um, scientists have not always been great at communicating, particularly with the community. And as a result, one of the things you'll find is that a lar large number of people actually don't trust us. We need to change that. And that starts with, with me and it starts with you. Um, only we can change misperceptions about vaccines, for instance. Um, I, I just this morning saw a, a news clip of people at a city council meeting in Florida who were arguing against a, um, uh, a new uh, rule in this town about wearing masks uh, because of the pandemic. And there were people that got up and said that they didn't believe the science and they didn't believe the doctors who were telling them about the science that they didn't believe that their credentials meant anything. It's up to us to help our fellow um, individuals, to help our neighbors, to help our community, to understand the importance of science. It's up to us to, um, to be the voice for the scientific community. Uh, you have learned a tremendous amount and it's super important that you be able to communicate what you have learned uh, in, in, a, um, in a community that doesn't always trust us. And, and I, if I give you no other charge, it's to do that, is to go forward uh, into your communities and talk to people. Let them know you. Let them um, know what you know. So finally, my heartfelt congratulations to all of you. I wish you all well as you take the next steps in your journeys. And I ask that you stay in touch with us. Uh, we love to know where our graduates are and what they're doing. And I wish you the best wishes for the class of 2020. Thank you, Dr. Garvey. As you know, today's ceremony is a little unique. Uh, under normal circumstances, uh, at this time, we would call uh, each of you up to the stage to recognize your accomplishments. For today, though, we've tried hard. The whole team has tried hard uh, and prepared a short video in its place. So I'll call your attention to the video. Reem Basakar. Dr. Basakar received her Doctor of Philosophy in Nutritional Sciences. 
Diane Begman. Dr. Begman received her Doctor of Philosophy in Toxicology and Cancer Biology. Evan Lynch. Dr. Lynch received his Doctor of Philosophy in Microbiology, Immunology, and Molecular Genetics and his medical degree as part of the MD-PhD program. Bader Abdallah. Bader received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Maya Cleveland. Maya received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Cheyenne Cook. Cheyenne received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Nevi Costello. Nevi received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Rachel Crosta. Rachel received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Courtney Kelson. Courtney received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Titus Lemaster. Titus received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Spencer McLaren. Spencer received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Abigail Menifee. Abigail received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Brian Moore. Brian received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences in the Clinical and Translational Sciences Pathway. Mary Emily Nolker. Emily received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Barry Ordu. Barry received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Megan Slack. Megan received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Margaret Spencer. Margaret received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Mark Stevens. Mark received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences in the Clinical and Translational Sciences Pathway. James Warwick. James received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences in the Clinical and Translational Sciences Pathway. Greg Watts. Greg received a Master of Science in Medical Sciences. Well, congratulations to each one of you. I'm going to ask, wherever you are, if you can, uh, and, and your families and friends uh, that are with you, if you could stand up. I'll give you a moment, if you're able. And we want to give you a round of applause, even though it's a distance. Congratulations. Now I want to welcome Dr. Melinda Wilson, Director of Graduate Study for the Master in Medical Science program to share some thoughts. Dr. Wilson. Thank you, Dean DiPaolo. On behalf of the Faculty of the College of Medicine, I would also like to extend my sincere congratulations um, to the students in the class of 2020. Whether you earned your master's or your PhD, you have all worked incredibly hard, as Dr. Garvey said, and faced incredible challenges to further your education over the past few years. This is a time that is always um, a time of incredible ac accomplishment, but given the added difficulties that you all had to endure, this spring from the disruptions and the um, stress of the COVID pa pandemic, you should be especially proud. I think back to when I was starting graduate school, we had a desk in our little office that held our five graduate students. There was a whole five of us in our, my first year class. Um, it was in this small building that was right outside the helicopter landing pads. Whenever they would helicopter in um, patients, it would get really, really loud in this little building. Um, so we obviously weren't very much valued because they stuck us in the worst place possible. However, we spent a lot of time during the day studying and late at night studying and late at night doing other things in there. Um, and it was just, it was our little, our little community. And at that time, we were also given this book. Um, it was the handbook of all the academic procedures um, and the potential faculty members that we could work with. Um, and again, this is before the internet. So it was a literal book and pages of um, faculty interests. If you think websites don't stay up to date, these little handbooks did not as well. Um, but on the one page that especially stood out to me 
was just after the table of contents, and it consisted of a checklist of things that we had to do to graduate. Pass your core classes, hopefully with an A, not always though, of course. Um, identify a mentor, um, which meant having to go to the scary faculty and talk to them and see if you could do a rotation with them. And again, this was really before the internet and before email, so we actually had to knock on their door, their office door, and ask them if we could uh, at least do a rotation with them. The next step then came, uh, once you found a mentor, was to come up with a research project, form the committee, pass qualifying exams for your PhDs, write, write, and write, many iterations of that writing, and then ultimately defend your final project. I looked at this checklist and thought to myself, how in the world am I gonna do this? This is gonna take forever, there's no way I'm ever gonna make it. Ultimately, I decided just to focus on the one thing at a time, take it one step at a time, and mark one box off at a time. I'm truly proud of all of you that you have all checked off those check boxes and have graduated today earlier this month, or earlier this semester, I guess, um, uh, and with that added stress of the pandemic. It's truly a remarkable accomplishment. Many of you are moving on to postdoctoral positions, teaching positions, further graduate school, PA school, medical school, dental school, furthering your, um, your uh, research and professional status and your jobs. Whatever your path, I am confident that your time here will, be success will help you be successful and that also you will make the University of Kentucky proud. Again, on behalf of all the faculty of the College of Medicine, congratulations to each of you. You're entering the healthcare and scientific arenas at a time when society seems to need you the most. Um, and best of luck in all your future endeavors and keep checking those boxes. It never does end, but that's what we all love about science and medicine. Congratulations, class of 2020. To each of you moving into this next phase of your careers, nothing can change our current situation and the impact it has had on our traditional ceremonies and the impact it may continue to have. But no matter the circumstances, we are all proud of you, your achievements, and we cannot wait to see where you're gonna go in the future or your next steps, um, as, as, as could be in careers in research, education, or further education in terms of healthcare and related fields. Keep in mind, though, that all of these fields are driven by the science that you've already had a great foundation here at the University of Kentucky. Um, and with that in mind, I'm going to uh, give you a quote from the author, Theodore Geisel. Um, I won't tell you where that's from, but maybe you might know um, or what, uh, what Geisel has, has written. Uh, he said, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you are the, the one who'll decide where to go. Um, and although it might seem trivial, I think it's really important that you have the confidence that you've had incredible training in whatever you do, whether it's a career that you're starting now or whether it's another educational opportunity, I know that you'll use what you've learned in a confident way for great impact to help those that we serve. As you leave here, Remember that you'll always be part of the University of Kentucky College of Medicine, and we're here for you. Please reach out, keep in touch, and thank you for joining us today, you, your, your friends, and your family. So thank you, Class of 2020, for all your hard work, and again, congratulations, you've earned it. Thank you.